Hello, my name is Martin and welcome back to another video. So, I'm out in, where are we? We're in Willington, near Derby. We're near Derby, apparently. <laughs> All I know is a long drive. But, we're at the Willington Power Station and Ant has brought us here. This was one of the coal-fired power stations that got decommissioned when? 99, 1999. Yeah. Right, when was it built? 1950s. He's a man of information, isn't he? He's not just looked it up or anything. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Cooling towers, I've never been this close to a cooling tower before. Now, we've, this is, for us, it's quite modern for us to look at on this channel, but it's quite fascinating. Most of the power station tech it has gone. Yeah, this is basically, it was all over there. Yeah. Flattened trees, it's the odd little bit, but nothing really worth. So power station gone, but the cooling towers are here. We'll see if we can take a closer look. There's one behind us there. We can take a look and go underneath it, I think. Might get some nice photographs and some footage. Are they going to plan, are they planning to bring them down? There was plans to actually, the land got sold I believe, I couldn't tell you the year, it weren't that long ago, uh, 15, 16, and there were plans to pull them down. Those two, they started doing it, so if you go inside, those two there, there yeah. all the stanchions, the bars, it's all been infilled on, it's like flat ground, All right. where these three are all as they were, they've got all the gear inside them, Right. untouched. Great stuff, let's take a look eh? There you go, in relationship to Manchester, where I'm from, that's where the uh, cooling towers are of the former Willington Power Station. We're kind of in the Midlands and we're between Derby and Burton-on-Trent. If you look on Google Maps on the satellite view, you can see the, uh, the tops of the five concrete sisters of the former Willington Power Station. Over here in front of us is one of the cooling towers that's been stripped out completely. Uh, so we'll go and take a look at this. Uh, this is amazing, amazing place. I've never been so close to uh, cooling towers in my life, to be honest with you. I know it sounds strange, but I haven't. So I'll show you where we're going. We're going this way, and I think Ant's already there. Who is there? There he is. Hello. Wow. So th so this has been stripped out, has it? Yeah, this one, that one, absolutely <laughs> obliterated. Okay, so it'd be worth just to go in and just have a look underneath it and see, see the view from above. Wow, what a place, look at that. Fantastic, eh? Um, amazing echo, do that brick, do that brick thing yeah. again. Ant's gonna throw a stone, listen to this. Right, listen. Ready? I don't know if that picked up on the camera. Oi! And again. Oh, again. Did you get that? I hope you did, because it's quite unique, amazing. Wow, so I imagine they're going to eventually blast these things, are they? Do you know the locals see it as a bit of a landmark now? And um, I think the majority of them, they don't want it to go. That's wow. the impression I get. Wow. I mean, until they've really got the purpose to actually build something on here, why spend money on bringing them down? Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. What gets me is the way they just... this, that, that sort of like... triangular sort of like pillar system there supports that vast, I mean, God, God knows how many thousands of tons of uh, concrete are in that, eh? Amazing. Yeah, and th so 300 foot high, you say? I believe so, yeah. So, when I was flying the drone, um, I actually got to the limit that the drone could go, because I would have gone even higher and got an even more of an aerial view of it, but I got to the, it wouldn't go up any higher, it's just got a limitation on it. So you kind of, um, you're stuck really what sort of views you can get. So these power stations out here in the Midlands, back when I was a train spotter in the 1980s, the most dueling, uncoolest kid on the planet, we used to see the class 56 diesel locomotives hauling merry-go-round trains and they were called merry-go-rounds because they picked up at the collieries 
and they went to the power stations and they dropped off and then they just went back round and picked up at the collieries and back round to the power stations and this one Willington would have probably been one of the, the big consumers of all that coal of, on those coal trains that we saw back then as a kid as a 16 17 year old in the uh, in the 80s with the like I say the 50s 60s haul in the merry-go-round trains so uh, a shadow of what it used to be but a ghostly shadow and kind of now romantic in a way that we can come and visit and have a look round it when it was running at full power Willington consumed 8,000 tons of coal a day here's one of the class 47 threes probably back in the 70s hauling a merry-go-round hopper train to feed the power stations if we take a look at rail map online it will show us the uh, now disused sidings they're there in yellow as you can see uh, around the power station they came off the main line now that bottom end there where of the sidings that little uh, spur there that actually ran between the um, ran between the cooling towers but now if we look at the aerial view the actual power station has been demolished and you'll see there's nothing left now at all of the uh, of where the power station was the site is just a brownfield site so while we're here what we're going to do is going to go into this uh, cooling tower this is one that's almost sort of complete still got all the gear inside um, <clears throat> the other ones some of them have been stripped out so the bottom is just very plain just gravel so we're going to go in there not sure what that was there, I'm sure somebody will be able to say what that was, some sort of mechanism. We'll go in there and we'll go underneath that one. So I think this thing here was some kind of valve mechanism uh, that could probably open and close the flow of water into the cooling tower because you'll see behind it is a kind of a big pipeline and that goes to a fountain or what I think is a fountain underneath the cooling tower. You'll see in a bit when we go inside there. So this obviously carried uh, possibly water, didn't it? I presume that's a pipeline that brought the water in. Um, I presume it is. Central column there. I wonder if this was all full of water at one point. Look at this. Hmm, interesting. Ah, I wonder if it shot up there. I wonder if the water came in, in a fountain type thing up there in order to cool it. I'm just guessing now, Anna, but yeah. You can see the top again. I'll take it these panels here with some kind of cooling mechanism. So Willington Power Station was basically two power stations, Station A and Station B. Um, they were commissioned or opened in 1957 and 1962 respectively. 
and Station A closed in 1995 and Station B closed in 1999. By the end, um, there was the privatisation of the uh, power generating industry in Britain. And I think the policy, because this was a coal-fired power station and the days were sort of numbered, the policy at Willington was just to run it into the ground. So they just ran it and ran it and ran it until something failed. And when there was a major failure, I presume there was safety, things were taken into account. But when something failed, um, that was it. That was the decision to shut it down. They weren't going to repair it. Just run it full full blast. And then when it failed, um, that's it. Switch it off. And that's the end of it because we ain't spending the money to uh, repair stuff. This is a picture of one of the cooling towers being uh, constructed back in the 50s at Willington. Uh, how they achieve that shape is beyond me. It's so clever. I don't know. As a lay person, I look at it and I just think, how on earth did they get that shape? Anyway, if you can put up with my dodgy drone footage, let's take a look at them from an aerial uh, viewpoint. So there you go, all the stuff remains in this one. Uh, I, I think that pipeline there, just hang on a second. I think that, that was a pipeline there that, that brought the, uh, the water along and then shot it up there and it sprayed out in the middle there. I think so, I think so. Uh, and then you can see, like I say, I've got that shot many times for you up there. Right here you are, an interesting one for me as a bit of a former train spotter. In the late 60s, the exciter unit at uh, Willington B burned out. Now, I don't know what an exciter unit does, but they drafted in a British Rail diesel locomotive. This is class 45023, named, later named the Royal Pioneer Corps. And it stood in for the exciter unit and it did the job very, very proudly. They actually cabled a set of the locomotive controls into the power station so they could stand in the power station and control the, the diesel engine while it stood in for the other exciter unit that burned out. Later, they calculated the revs that, that, that were used and the fuel consumption used, and they reckon that the locomotive could have gone twice round the world uh, given the amount of revs and the fuel used. Now, it's anecdotal evidence that. I don't know if that was true or not. What a fascinating little story of a, a diesel engine, one that I probably later saw, uh, standing in for an exciter unit at the power station. Brilliant. They've just been laughing at me as we leave that cooling tower there because <laughs> I set the drone up 
and uh, I think I went up above this one here went over it looked down <clears throat> and I thought I was still there this is the danger with drones you see I thought I was still up there and apparently I was round the other side of that then two there almost back in Derby and I'm look, look, I lost the drone, I'm thinking I can't see it, I can't see it, can't hear it. This is the problem I have with drones, you see. It's very, very disorientating. Anyway, <laughs> just thought I'd throw that in for you. Ant, Corkers, thank you very much for bringing us. That's all right, thanks for coming. No problem, and uh, that was wonderful. Hope you enjoyed the video, thank you very much. Take care, and I shall see you next week in the next one.